Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Refuge Church Online. If this is your first time with us, we're so glad that you've tuned in. Uh, I'm super excited to share this message with you today. Uh, I believe the words that, that God has given me uh, to share with you, uh, they are going to help your life tremendously, not just in the future, but in the presence. This message is exactly what God has been using to change my entire outlook and approach to life. This message today is entitled, Pray About It. You know, we, we are living in chaotic times. We are living in some of the most difficult, stressful times. And if there's ever been a time that we need to understand the significance of prayer, it's now. My uh, 10-year-old son, Asher, he once said to me, he said, Daddy, you know I've got two superpowers. I said, oh yeah? What are those superpowers? He said boldly to me, he said, love and prayer. Now, today, I'm going to talk with you about one of those superpowers. We all know that love is one of the greatest things in this world, and it's one of the most powerful things, but so is prayer. You know, I know I've had many, many a day that if it were not for prayer and for people praying for me and with me, I don't know how I'd make it. But I want to first start out by just uh, answering a question, and that is, what is prayer? What is prayer? Real quickly, prayer, it is two-way communication or conversation with God. Prayer is simply a conversation with God. And that conversation, that prayer, it is made possible through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, the one who paid the price for our sins on the cross, the one who made us righteous in his eyes and through his bloodshed. We're then able to have this relationship with God, this close relationship. But when it comes to prayer, prayer is the most neglected gift that God gives us. I truly believe prayer is one of the most neglected gifts that God gives us. And yet prayer is often the most extreme difference maker outside of love. As a musical artist, MC Hammer's famous song used to say, he said, you've got to pray just to make it today. I think we would all say that's the case now. Whether we're praying or not, that's a different story. Listen, this is certainly the time that you and I understand that instead of just being overwhelmed by the chaos and moved and tossed here and there by our feelings, we've got to learn how to pray things out. We have to learn how to pray about it. Today, I'm going to share with you five things that God has put on my heart to live out personally when it comes to prayer and to share with you. It is very likely that the next week or two, I'm going to share a part two and a part three of this exact same message. But today, I'm going to stick with exactly what God told me to begin with to get us all on the right track. The first thing you need to know is this. God doesn't want you worrying about anything. God wants you praying about everything. God doesn't want you worrying about anything. God wants you praying about everything. Listen, everybody, because we're human, everybody has something in life that they worry about. They have things that they have worried about, whether it be your your health, your finances, your, your family, your future. There are many struggles and worries that we all deal with in this life. But God doesn't want us worrying. The scriptures say very clearly, God doesn't want us worrying about anything. Instead, he wants us to pray about everything. God wants every single thing in your life and mine covered in prayer. Listen, worry, it changes nothing except your blood pressure level, your stress level. But prayer, it can change anything. Listen, if it matters to you, it matters to God. You need to know, it, it, listen, there's no such thing as, well, you know, God doesn't want to hear from me because, you know, what's going on in my life is so small compared to, to what this person or that person is going through. Listen, if it matters to you, it matters to God. First Peter 5, 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Scripture says, don't worry about it, pray about it. Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need 
and thank him for all he has done. Listen, there's never a time that you give God a, a prayer request that there are not many times for thanksgiving. There's always something good and of God going on in your life. You just may have other things that God needs to be in the mix of. Verse 7 says, Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Listen, you can't have God's peace without praying about anything and everything that is going on in your life. Listen, I once asked a 94-year-old retired pastor, I said, if you could go back in time and take me back to your most stressful moments ever that you experienced, how might you deal with those experiences better? Well, he said, I would pray. I said, okay, I understand that you would pray, but, but then what? What after prayer? He said, I would pray again. I said, sir, I, I understand that, that we need to pray, but after you've prayed and, and then you've prayed some more, then what would you do with those most stressful, worrisome situations? He said, I would pray again. Eventually, I understood that, that what he was telling me was that life and its most burdensome things, the things that you, you can't move yourself, you can't change yourself, otherwise you wouldn't need God's help, that he learned that the greatest thing he could do was pray, that worry and change nothing, as well as he couldn't take things in his own hands. So sometimes, listen, you have to pray, pray, pray. But secondly, God doesn't want you slandering others. God wants you praying for others. God doesn't want you slandering others. God wants you praying for others. Now, by slandering, I mean just gossiping, you know, kind of cutting down some person. God doesn't want us just talking about people and their problems and, and, and you know, did you know this person did that or, or this happened in their life? God wants us praying for them, not slandering them. There's a major difference between slandering lips and, and, and a vicious mindset towards someone versus a sincere prayer and concern for that person. Listen, many talk about everything and never pray about anything. Many people take gossip and try to shade it over and, and, and put it in the form of a prayer request when really you're not praying about it. You're just talking about it. You're not, you're not lifting that person up to God. You're just putting them down to others. Listen, don't slander others. Pray for them. Proverbs 10, 18 through 19. It says, hiding hatred makes you a liar. Slandering others makes you a fool. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. If you're sitting with someone right now, tell them, hey, you know what? Sometimes you really need to do what they taught my, my youngest in preschool, and that is you need to zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket. Sometimes the best thing for you to do is to shut up, is to be quiet. We all have those times. Listen, you or I don't fix anything, and we certainly don't make this world a better place by just putting other people down. What can change things is lifting up other people in prayer, especially people that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. James 5, 16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Listen, don't talk about people with the wrong attitude Pray for people and situations with the right attitude. Because the earnest prayers of a righteous person, the scriptures say that when our hearts are right with God and, and we're sincerely bringing things to him on behalf of others or ourselves, there's great power and there, it produces wonderful results. Listen, I try to call my dad daily. I try to call my dad and my mom daily as often as I can as my dad continues his battle with a very vicious cancer. But my dad recently, just this past week, said something that grabbed my heart. He said, he said, son, there's nothing greater you can do for a person than to pray for them. It just means so much to know that others are praying for you, he said. He said, it's powerful to hear it, and it's something you can just feel when people are praying for you. Listen, talking about people doesn't help things one bit, but praying for them could change their heart, their life and situations. But thirdly, you need to know that God doesn't want you praying sometimes. God wants you praying always. 
God doesn't want you praying sometimes. God wants you praying always. Now, let me clarify this. This is not talking about you having to sit around all the time with your, with your hands folded in the, what we call the prayer position and just constantly praying out loud. By the way, um, sometimes you do need to pray things out loud because there's certain power in that and there needs to be a certain conviction and, 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 uh, and, and synergy with that is maybe as you pray with other people. But listen, your prayer is just as powerful even when you don't utter any words out loud because God hears your hearts. But praying all the time doesn't mean staying in the prayer position, but it means to have a lifestyle fueled by prayer. We need to live in a, a prayerful state of mind. Listen, you need to pray when you feel like it. You need to pray when you don't feel like it. You need to pray when things aren't going well, but you also need to proactively pray even when things seem fine. There is always something in your life or mine that need to be bathed in prayer because we're always in a spiritual battle of some sort. Listen, the scripture says we're not, we're not against each other, even though sometimes we think we mistake one another for the enemy. No, there, listen, there's God's side and there's, there's Satan's side. God is for you and Satan is against you. We're in a spiritual battle. And listen, spiritual battles cannot be won just talking about it, but only through praying about it. Listen, pray before you take a step Pray before you make a decision. Pray before you seek to handle anything. Make sure that what you're about to do has been led and maybe um, prepared through prayer. Psalm 55, 17 says, morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. Listen, the more distress you are feeling, the more you need to be praying when you breathe in, praying when you breathe out. I call that prayer conditioning. Sometimes we're just not in the prayer condition and we need to be, and so then we can't endure things. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, never stop praying. Luke 5.16 tells us that Jesus, he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Listen, prayer was how Jesus started every day, early morning. Scripture says he would come to this side or that side, get away from, from the world and, 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 and maybe even others and, and pray in solitude. Listen, prayer was how Jesus made every big decision. He prayed all night before he chose his original disciples. Prayer was how Jesus handled his most stressful moments, even when he felt like he couldn't handle another moment. But fourthly, God doesn't want prayer to be your last resort. God wants prayer to be your first response. God doesn't want your prayer to be the last option. Like, oh, you know, you know, once I've done everything, then we can pray about it. No, he wants it to be your first response. And that, that, that comes down to this. You have to learn the discipline along with the necessity of praying quickly about things and earnestly about things and understand that, listen, when you put things in the hands of God, things are beginning to turn around. Listen, we live in a world full of sin, chaos, confusion, division. We can see clearly that we desperately need God's divine intervention. However, instead of turning to God first, even though on our U.S. currency it says in God we trust, instead of turning to God first, we turn to him last greater than man's best ideas or your best social media post or even your best presidential candidate. Americans need to get on their knees. Americans need to get over themselves and turn everything and everyone completely over to God. And first of all, that begins with you. God, I surrender everything. I surrender who I am and who I am to be. Listen, Americans need to come together in prayer not as a last resort, not as a periodic event, but an ongoing response to the evil in this world. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We've heard this, many of you have. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen, the First right step is to surrender it all, to turn from your sin, to repent of your sin, and to turn completely over to God and humble yourself before him. And listen, the Bible says he's going to hear your prayer and he's going to respond in accordance to what's best. 
Listen, so often we only pray after we've tried everything else when prayer should be our first response. While you may be able to handle some things, only God can handle anything. And many things, the scripture says, can only come out by prayer. I want you to hear that, that situation that you've had kind of looming over you whether in your life or the life of one of your loved ones, that situation, that concern that you have, you've tried everything and you're like, man, I don't know what else to do. Scripture tells us what to do. Some things can only come out by prayer. Jesus said this in Mark 9, 29, when Jesus's disciples, they couldn't cast out a particular demon and they didn't understand why. And Jesus said this in Mark 9, 29, he says, this kind can only come out by prayer. Maybe you have a situation, I'm sure you do, that only prayer and only God can change it. Listen, prayer first before you tackle the issue at hand should always be your first step. You should pray first before you talk to anyone else about that matter. You should pray first so that you can handle things and even allow God to, to handle things through you in a way that pleases Him. Listen, prayer should not be something that you look at like, you know what, prayer's the least I can do. No, prayer's the greatest thing you can do. Let me give you some practical things right here. Listen, you need to pray before you make that big financial purchase. I used to not, I used to not do that back in my life. I used to, not, I used to just kind of think of, of practical things, you know, but listen, even in the way that I use my money, it's not my money. What I, anything I've got, it's been loaned to me by God. He's the owner. I'm just, I'm just his child. Listen, you need to pray before you choose to marry that person. Don't, don't go with your gut. Go with your God. You need to pray before you walk out the door and into a stressful world that we all know will rip you to shreds. You need to pray before you put together your own plans and seek to create your own purpose. So I've been in ministry 27 years. I have never, ever, ever served in any capacity in, in the church and in the ministry that was not first bathed in prayer. I didn't say, hey, we would love to live here or we would love to live there. We bathed it in prayer and then we had the peace of God because we had given it to God and he led us where he led us. You see, just because you have a good idea, it may not be God's idea. And God's ideas and plans, they are always better than ours. You know, our, our best laid plans are going to lead right to a disappointing roadblock, whereas God's plan is going to lead us to a road ramp and take us higher and greater than we could take ourselves. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. If you want God's best laid plans for your life, then you need to put your entire life and every single step in his hands. Don't make prayer your last response. Make it your first response. Pray for God's divine intervention, his direction, his strength, his peace, and for his will to be done in every and any situation. And this brings me to this last point. God doesn't want you praying your will God wants you praying his will. God doesn't want you praying your will. God wants you praying his will. Most people don't realize it, but they wake up most days fighting with God or telling God what they're going to do. When what you should do every day you wake up and say, hey, God, thank you for waking me up. I know that if you woke me up today, you got a purpose, you got a plan. And God, I know your plans are better than mine. So lead me to your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, I believe, it says that, that it's through the renewing of your mind that you're able to understand God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Listen, some of you, you need to be detoxed of your way of doing things, and learn God's way of doing things. Listen, prayer that works is prayer that is centered on God's will. Prayer is about your heart coming in line with God's heart, not God getting on the same page with you, you getting on the same page with God. You seeking God's will, not telling God your will, and then asking him to bless it. Listen, when we know in our hearts that we are genuinely seeking God's will in prayer, we can have confidence, the scripture says, that whatever we ask for in his name and, and in his, towards his will, God will guide us, God will protect us, and God will bless our way. 
as we seek his way. 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Listen, the Bible says that Jesus prayed often about everything. He never, ever prayed a selfish prayer. He never woke up and said, God, well, I want to do this. He may have said, hey, you know what? The, the spirit is, is, is willing, but the, the flesh is weak or the body is weak. But he never prayed a selfish prayer. He always said, not my will, but your will be done. He made the most of this earthly life because he made sure that God the Father's will, his perfect will, led his step. That's how he got it across. That's how you and I had the opportunity for salvation. And God used Jesus to make a lasting eternal difference in countless lives like you and me. Matthew 6, 9 through 10, Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Some of you doubt this sometimes, and that's this. God already has the plans made. God already has the plans in place. God already has the script written out. The only thing waiting is whether or not you're going to align yourself with what God's already prepared in heaven for you to do here on earth. Listen, you need to pray and let God's word lead your thoughts, attitude, and agenda. By the way, there's nothing that is God's will for your life that is going to contradict God's word. Now, this is just something coming to my mind right now. For instance, if you are living together, the Bible's pretty clear. You're not supposed to be living together until you have said, I do, until you have followed through with marriage. But there's so many things that I could mention that we, 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 we take certain scriptures and we say, hey, you know what, that aligns with my life. And then there's other things we dodge and we go, well, hey, that's not that bad. Listen, do you want some of what God has for you or do you want all of what God has for you? Do you want just a little bit of, of, of getting on the right path or do you want to be on the straight and narrow that leads to a rewarding life? You need to let God's word dictate the principles and the process of your life. You need to let God's spirit lead you. You have to die to yourself and say, hey, I empty myself, fill me of you, and lead me to where you want me to be. You need to pray earnestly for God's will to be done in your life, in your family, in your friends, in this world. You have to come in agreement with God about anything and everything. So my friends today, I want you to know this. God wants you to know this. You need to pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. The moment that the worry comes to your heart, you need to turn it into a prayer to God. You need to pray for people. Don't talk about people. Society is full of people with jabbering jaws talking about many things and many people and not living on mission and not living with the right heart towards God and towards people. Listen, God wants you to love people because he loves them dearly. Don't slander them. Lift them up in prayer. He wants you to keep praying all the time, living with a lifestyle fueled by prayer. You need to pray first, then seek to follow God's orders. Next, prayer should be your first response, not your last resort. And when you pray, make sure that what you are praying, that you sincerely are saying, God, your will, not my will, be done. Then, listen, your prayers will be heard and your prayers will be answered in accordance to God's will. Whatever is on your heart and mind and whatever you might be going, on, going through right now in your life, listen, God wants you to pray about it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I thank you for the privilege that you've given us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to be called children of God. And Lord, as children of God through Jesus Christ, Lord, we have this, this, this gift of prayer to talk with you anytime, God. The reception is always clear on your side, God. You're always, Lord, there. You're an ever-present help in our every time of need. God, you, you call us to pray, to seek you with all of our heart, to give you all of our worries. Lord, in all of our ways, Lord, to just keep letting you fill us and flow through us. God, whatever it is that's going on in our minds and our hearts, Lord, may we turn from our way May we wholeheartedly seek your way. Lord, may we give you all that is weighing upon our shoulders in our lives and in the lives of those around us. 
God, may you lead us all down the path that you have for us, God. I lift up each and every person right now specifically. Lord, for that person that has not yet trusted you, Jesus, as their Savior and Lord, I pray that they would do so while today is still possible. And God, I pray for that person, Lord, who you've spoken to through this message. Lord, that they would respond in a way that is pleasing to you, Lord. Because it's not, it's not my opinion that matters, Lord. It's your word. God, we give you all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, to all of our ministry partners, as always, I like to say thanks. I uh, thank you for believing in this vision. Thank you for seeking to live out this vision. And thank you for supporting this vision as we seek to do everything we possibly can in the present and moving forward to love, lift, and lead people to Jesus. I'm telling you right now, listen, even in the coming months right now, Big stuff is right around the corner. We are seeking God. We are down on our knees. We are on our face before God saying, God, lead us to take the next right step. But I'm telling you, it's going to blow your mind what God is preparing and what he's planning on to do in early 2021. So right now, if you haven't been able to join us, but you could join us ever on a Sunday morning, 915 at the Ivanhoe Family Cinemas, we're still meeting uh, outside. We have had um, several people give their hearts and lives to Christ. In fact, today uh, I'm baptizing seven uh, believers in Christ, maybe even more. Uh, but I am so excited about what God's doing and what God's going to do. But listen, all of that is made possible because of your, your support, whether it be your, your support in your time, your support in serving this ministry, or your support in giving to this ministry. If you would like to give a tax-deductible gift to support this ministry, please help us any way you can. You can do so easily. Go to refugechurch.org slash giving. Or you can simply text the word GIVE, that's G-I-V-E, to 843-806-0831. Or you can mail a check to 203 Eddie Chastine Drive, Walterboro, South Carolina, 29488. Listen, I'm praying for you. God loves you. We love you. Hope to tune back in with you soon. God bless.